Hey everybody, welcome back to the third part of the Cura Advanced or Custom Settings features, whatever you like to call it. Uh, we've made two so far and we're going to go over the third part today which will be infill right here. We've gone over quality in the previous one, shell, and now we're going to be working on infill. Um, so basically what you want to do is make this bigger and for those of you that are new and don't know how to bring up these additional advanced features you just go right here by this little gyro looking thing click on it and you can pick whatever you want so if you notice right here when I take infill pattern off it reduces the box when I add it it puts it back on there so that's how you do that okay so let's get started uh, infill the first thing is infill density that you see right here um, but before I get started just let you guys know these numbers uh, don't go by them um, like I said all of my prints they vary so sometimes my numbers can be a little off because I do do trial and error so don't go by this please I have another video out there uh, with my Cura settings in there if you'd like to see what settings I actually use so you can just refer back to that one okay so infill Infill density. By now, most of you should know what infill density is, but for those of you that don't, uh, infill dens density is basically the amount of plastic used on the inside of the print. So if you have a print like this, uh, it's what goes inside of it. This is actually a very bad example because it's hollow on this side, but it would be if this part was to be capped off it would be what's inside and in, uh, infill density pretty much uh, is the plastic that goes inside of that okay um, the higher the percentage the stronger your print will be so if you have something let's say you print a test cube and it's only at one percent infill you will be able to squeeze it to a point where it can break but at the same time if you use say fifty or sixty percent uh, then that will be pretty rough. You can throw it against the wall, step on it, and it should be durable enough to hold up. Um, now, most people usually use about 10 to 20 percent infill for most of their prints. Uh, these prints would be display pieces or things that you uh, would not use all the time. But if it was something that you used all the time, I would probably recommend going with the higher infill density. Now, if you're going to make a model uh, that moves and can be used for a lot of uh, mechanical moving parts type of deal, then you probably want to go higher, like I said. And uh, an example of what infill density looks like on the inside uh, would be right here. If you take a look, these are some of the... <clears throat> excuse me so like this one right here I would say that's maybe about a 10 percent 10 to 15 percent infill so you see you see a lot of gaps here but here I would say it's more of like a 30 to 40 um, so you notice the cubes are smaller giving it a stronger bond therefore it's gonna be a tougher print or model whatever you're printing okay so that's the first one moving along to the second one which is infill line distance uh, what that basically is instead of setting the infill density as a percentage uh, like this one up here right here see how it has a percent sign so this is 60 percent at the moment so instead of setting it as a percentage you can also set it uh, as a line distance so you can basically go here and change it out to like say two or something like that but notice when you go in here and do it it takes the percentage off you can't you can't change the percentage because you can either do the top one or this one here so pick infill density or infill line distance um, now let's say if you accidentally click on this uh, it won't let you go back to the percentage. Easy way would be just to hit this undo button here and you can go and set it right there to whatever you want. Okay. And when you do that, if you notice, the uh, infill line density automatically calculates that for you. So, moving along, um, 
what is the definition of infill line density? Basically, what it is um, is the distance between each infill line, which has the same effect as changing the infill density. I don't use this very often. I just set the infill density as percentage. I think 99.9% .9 of the people out there use that, uh, but there might be certain cases uh, you would want to use this so that's why I'm going over it besides that it's not really something that people use all the time alright guys so moving along uh, the next part is called infill patterns um, for this I went ahead and changed the model out the STL file because um, the other one it was just there from previously so I don't think it would have worked for this demo but okay Going along, there's different types of pattern you can do. Uh, for example, this the first one um, is grid. And if you want to see what that looks like, let's go ahead and take this up. That's what that looks like. Uh, and I'll go into a little bit more detail, but lines looks like this. and triangles and so on and so forth okay so let me explain to you what each one is and uh, you can figure out when exactly you would want to use that so starting off with that the first one you have is grid okay which is right here uh, grid a grid shape infill with lines in both diagonal directions on each layer okay um, then you have lines lines uh, creates a grid shaped infill printing in one diagonal direction per layer so if you notice this one it just goes in one direction while this one does both uh, this to me would be a stronger fit just between these two right now. Now triangles uh, basically creates triangle shape infills. Uh, cubes, which would be this one right here, uh, cubes a 3D infill of titled uh, of sorry small cubes basically. Uh, that's what it looks like right there. And then uh, concentric, uh, concentric basically is the infill prints from the outside towards the center of the model this way uh, the infill lines won't be visible through the walls of the printing so if you have a really thin wall um, sometimes infills do tend to pop out I don't know if you guys have had experience with that but I've run into that issue before where the surface of my model looks like either triangles or cubes or um, lines or grids so basically what this does if you notice it starts from like out here and just keeps going and going until it gets to the center this way it gives you a smoother finish on the outside so for those of you printing uh, thin walls you probably want to go this way uh, concentric 3d basically is the infill prints from the outside towards the center of the model with an incline over the entire print. Uh, so if you notice here, it's not a very good uh, demo, but let me see if I can show you here. So it's basically like a pyramid. You notice as it, as it prints, it gets higher and higher and higher. Uh, so that's basically what the 3D version of uh, the concentric walls look like. While well, the original one would just be flat all the way across. Okay. Now, uh, the next one would be zigzag. Uh, zigzag is basically a grid shaped infill printing continuously um, in one diagonal direction. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Okay. There it goes for some reason as long as I zoom out. 
So zigzag basically, if you notice right here, it starts in one point and just comes around. Does not stop printing. It's continuous. It just keeps going back and forth from one end to the other end, a diagonal uh, way. Okay. So that's basically what that is. Okay. Uh, now moving along to the next part, which is the infill overlap percentage, which is right here. And uh, let me kind of show you. This is the diagram that we're going to be looking at. I'm going to explain that to you in just a little bit. But um, the infill overlap percent is what it is with this feature. You can control the amount of overlap you have between the infills and the wall. You can set this number. Uh, or you can set this as a number or percentage. Um, it's really up to you how you want to do it. So you have this one. There's another one in here. If you notice, uh, where did it go? Right here, but I didn't select it. But you can do the same thing. Again, it's just like earlier. You can only pick either one. So if you change this, uh, you won't be able to do the percentage. But you can always do the undo button after that. So that should be fine. So if I go here see how the undo button pops up now I can't change the percentage um, I find percentages to be a little bit easier to work with so uh, that's why I didn't add that in there but just since I mentioned it and I'll go and show it to you okay so the good thing about this is that the higher the number the better the bond between the infill and the walls on the downside it may decrease the quality of the print visually and there is a chance of over extrusion okay uh, normally the default in Cura is good enough uh, for people that don't fully understand this but as we all know uh, once you start 3d printing good enough is just not good enough so uh, let me show you kind of an example of what everything I just said looks like okay so here you get the infill overlap um, right here so if you notice as your outer wall and your inner wall as the uh, printer is printing out the infill as it gets right here this is the part that it does the overlap if you look right here the uh, black part right here so you notice it's touching the wall but it's not going all the way through okay um, so that's what basically the overlap is. You got your infill that comes in through here and it stops right there normally, but here it just goes a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, now, moving along to the next part, which should be skin overlap percentage. Okay, what is this? Um, really quick, this feature uh, basically can also be set as a percentage or number I just have the percentage here like I said is this gonna do the same thing that is doing up here you can put numbers or percentage percentage is what I prefer um, it works almost the same as info overlap um, which we talked about just basically a minute ago the main difference is that it affects all the top and bottom layers of the print okay so that's the only uh, difference between the two now uh, the next one will be infill um, wipe distance yep this is where we left off I believe infill wipe distance and basically what this is this feature tells your printer to stop extruding at the end of the infill which is being uh, printed before it reaches the wall and starts printing on it uh, now keep in mind that the nozzle will still ooze a little bit of plastic or filament but it still helps because it stops early enough to where you don't have to or where you don't get over extrusion on your model um, and this is what it looks like same model here but we're gonna go if you look at the gray area here so it comes through uh, infill overlap was here infill uh, wipe distance notice it goes into a little bit more into the uh, inner wall 
but not too much to where it affects your outer outer wall at all okay so that's what that looks like I hope it helps visually so you guys can see it alright the next one's going to be infill layer thickness okay this one uh, since the layer height of the infill is not very important for visual quality um, you can um, decide to use, you you can decide to use thicker layers on the infill because nobody ever sees the inside and by doing this you can reduce um, the print time so basically it's gonna be a big mess inside but nobody's ever gonna see it so you should be okay and this way it reduces the time so you don't have to sit there maybe you'll cut off 15 20 minutes depending on how long your print is but be careful when you adjust the setting just make sure it's a multiple of your current layer height so your layer height you'll find up here so mine currently is 0.2 so for example if your layer height is um, is let's say you have it at one um, then you want the thickness to be in increments of 0.2 if you have it at two you want your um, increments to be like point two four six uh, if it's one then it's one two three uh, however you want to do it but usually most people have it at two so with these um, settings your printer will print two walls okay so basically it'll print two walls on the first two layers and then print a thicker um, wall for the third one and then it'll go back to printing two normal walls and then the third one will be thicker and it'll continue so on and so forth okay so again just to summarize two layers will be normal the third one will be thicker for better bonding then you got two normal and then the sixth one will be thicker in bonding then two more and then the eighth one will be better in bonding so it just goes in like that's why it says to do increments of your layer height for that particular reason alright and then the last thing we're gonna talk about for infill is infill before walls um, this feature basically is what it says it will print your infill before it prints uh, your walls as a result it gives you better overhang prints um, because your walls will stick to the infill uh, um, your, that you have already printed the downside to this is that your infill might show through your wall because it was printed first taking away the smooth finished look that most of us try to go for so um, that's basically it. I hope I didn't spend too much time on infill because there's no need for that. <laughs> but uh, the next part will be material, which is a very long uh, video because there's so many things to cover in, in material. So um, I will get working on that right away, guys. I'll, I'll try to get a video out at least uh, every three days just on the advanced setting for Kira so you don't have to uh, sit there and wait too long. Uh, but uh, that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have questions, concerns, comments, please leave it at the bottom. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Most of you that have been following me know that I respond to every single comment that uh, people leave. Um, even if it's just a like. Um, if you want to see more new content and it's your first time to my channel, go and subscribe. If, if not, then uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, with that said, guys, uh, thank you for watching. And like always, good luck and happy printing.